This is Effector Calculus, Lecture 18. And it's already the 3rd of April. And let me go to the cord. Oh, we are. So we're studying maximum minimum problems. Is section 15.7. And maximum minimum of maxima and minima of functions occur at critical points. So the point A, B, for a function of two variables, we're looking at a function Z equal F of X, Y. So the point A, B is a critical point. Sometimes abbreviated CP. If it's partial derivatives with respect to X and with respect to Y, are both zero uh, or um, one or both partial derivative fails to exist, does not exist at the point A, B. And wherever in the interior of a region there's going to be a local maximum or minimum. Uh, the two partial derivatives will be zero and you'll be at a critical point. And of course, if the two partial derivatives are zero, then every directional derivative is zero. But being a critical point doesn't distinguish minima from maxima. And for that, we use what is in the text, theorem 15.15, which is the second derivative test. which says the following. So we have z equal f of x, y, a function of two variables with partial derivatives. Partial with respect to x and partial with respect to y. Um, continuous in some open disk around the point A, B. Which is a critical point. That means the partial of X with respect to X at A, B and the partial of F with respect to Y at A, B are both zero. So we define this function of X and Y, capital D of X, Y, which is the partial, the second partial with respect to X, that is, we differentiate x with respect to x twice at a, b. Differentiate f with respect to y twice at a, b. Minus the mixed partial, partial with respect to x and then with respect to y, the order doesn't matter, squared. So this is how we define this function, which if you like is the determinant of the two by two matrix fxx, fxy, fyx, fyy. Mm -hmm. This is called the Hessian matrix. 
not important for us. And there are three cases. If, if this number D is positive and the mix and the second partial is negative, then we have a local max. If this determinant is positive and the partial of f with respect to x twice is positive, then we have a local minimum. If the derivative at a, b is negative, determinant, then no matter what, we have a saddle point. It means at that point, in one direction, the function is going up, but in another direction, it's going down. And if this de determinant is zero, then the test is inconclusive. We get no information. Notice that if this determinant is positive, and this is non-negative, this product has to be positive. So if one of these numbers is positive, the other is positive. If one is negative, the other is negative. So this is not really an, an, an asymmetric uh, condition. Um, okay. So that is the second derivative test. And I'm going to spend the next the uh, period of time um, doing problems, uh, looking at examples. Uh, so we get to see how to use the test. Um, so I'm just going to take various exercises in the problems at the end of this section, 15.7, and we'll see how they go. So. Find the critical points. For the function, um, f of x, y equals x to the fourth plus y to the fourth minus 16 x, y. So if we take the partial derivative with respect to x, the derivative of x to the fourth is 4x cubed. The derivative of y to the fourth with respect to x is 0. The derivative of minus 16xy with respect to x is minus 16y equals 0. And the partial derivative of f with respect to y is... 4y cubed minus 16x equals 0. So this is the same as saying, if I divide by 4, 4y equals x cubed. This says that 4x equals y cubed. Um, so what are all solutions of uh, this? Um, well, let's see. If 4y is x cubed, then y is a fourth x cubed. So y cubed is a fourth x cubed cubed is one over 64 x to the ninth. So this says four times 64, which is 256 equals x to the eighth, 
what is 256? 256 is two to the eighth. So if x to the eighth is two to the eighth, x equals plus or minus two. Of course, there's one other solution. Um, I'm dividing by x, or, sorry, x equals plus or minus 2. If x is plus or minus 2, uh, what is y? <coughs> so, if x is 2, then y is a fourth x cubed, which is 1 fourth times 8, which is 2. If x is minus 2, then y is one fourth times minus two cubed, which is minus two. And um, I got this by dividing by x. Uh, I can't divide by x if x is zero, but I also have x equals zero, in which case y equals zero. So we have three critical points. 2, 2, minus 2, minus 2, and 0, 0. Okay. Actually, if we want to know, for these critical points, and here we have, this is our function. Do we have a local maximum or a local minimum at these points? So if this is partial of f with respect to x, if we differentiate a second time with respect to x, we get 12x squared. If we differentiate the derivative of f with respect to x and then with respect to y, we get minus 16. If we differentiate with respect to y twice, we get 12y squared. If we differentiate with respect to y and then with respect to x, we get minus 16. So we have our determinant, 12x squared minus 16, minus 16, 12y squared. The determinant of that is 12 times 12, 144, x squared y to the fourth, x squared y squared, minus 16 times 16, minus 256. So d of x, y is equal to this. Um, let's see, 144 is... 9 times 16. This is 9 times 16. This is 16 times 16. So if I just factor out, this is 16 times 9 x squared y squared minus 16. So at the point 0, 0, we get minus 256, which is negative. We have a saddle point. At 2, 2, or at 2 minus, at minus 2, minus 2, those are the two other critical points. We have 16 times 9 times 4 times 4 minus 16. This is 16 times 9 times 8 times, 8 times 16. That's positive. And the partial of f with respect to x and x at 2, 2 is um, 12 times 4 is 48 is positive. So we have a local minimum. So if we apply the second derivative test to the three critical points of this function at um, 0, 0, we have a saddle point. 
And at these two points, we have local minima. And that seems to be the story. Let me pause for a moment because I'm curious to see what this the graph of this function, what the surface looks like. And I can use Maple, I believe. So let me see if I can open a Maple window. Um, let's see, I'm not sure if I can do this, but we'll try. Mm -hmm. So there is a plot 3D. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't even need this. Uh, Okay, so let me see if I can share the screen with the Maple worksheet. Share screen. There it is. So hopefully you can see this. So what I did, if you know Maple, if you were lucky enough to learn Maple on 155 or 156, um, I didn't even need this actually, so let me just, it doesn't matter. Um, let But there's a command, plot 3D in maple. So this is the function f of x, y equals x to the fourth plus y to the fourth minus 16xy. And here I plotted it for x and y between minus three and plus three. And what we saw, <coughs> using the second derivative test was there's a saddle point at zero, zero and local minima at two, two and minus two, two. So if you look at this graph right here where my cursor is, that's zero, zero. And you can see in one direction, the curve is going up and in the other direction, the surface is going down. So that's exactly a saddle point. And it looks like here and over here, at 2, 2, and minus 2, 2, we have a relative minima. Let's see, I can somehow turn this a little bit. Um, so here's this local minimum at 2, minus 2. Oops, kind of crazy, this thing. Here's another local minimum, and then it starts to go up. Let me make this, uh, see if I go minus 4. To four minus four to four. Let's see if you can see this a little bit better. There's a minimum here and a minimum here, and they're just those two. And in the center, There's a saddle point. Let me just go look at it around the center. One, one. Oh, okay. So now you can see that saddle point a little bit better. Right here in the center, that's zero, zero. And it's going up in one direction and it's going down in another direction. It actually is pretty fantastic what a couple of simple commands in Maple can do. But that's using Maple. Okay. In any case, that kind of visually verifies that what we did is correct. Okay. Any questions about that?
Uh, okay. Let's do some more. Mm. Let's look at number. Twenty seven. We have the function f of x y equals x to the fourth plus two y squared. Uh, actually, this looks too much like the one we just did. Let me pick a one that looks a little bit different. Suppose I take number twenty nine, which is x to the which is four plus x to the fourth plus three y to the fourth. Four plus x to the fourth plus three y to the fourth. So first we have to find the critical points. So the partial of f with respect to x is four x cubed, and the partial of f with respect to y is 12 y cubed. And these are equal to zero only when x and y are both zero. So the one critical point is zero, zero. Then we need the second partial derivatives. So differentiate again with respect to x, you get 12x squared. Take fx and differentiate with respect to y, you get 0. Take fy, differentiate with respect to x, you get 0. Take fy and differentiate a second time with respect to y, you get 36y squared. And if you take the determinant of this, d of x, y, it's this times this minus this squared. That's 12 times 36 times x squared, y squared. At 0, 0, we get 0. So this test gives us no information in this case. And that's all you can say, no information. Here's one that looks a little more interesting. Number 31, we have the function f of x, y equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared minus 4xy plus 5. And you have to ask, what is the domain of this function? Well, it has to be that what's under the square root sign is greater than or equal to zero. But if we're lucky, you have x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 5. If I rearrange that slightly, that x squared minus 4x plus y squared, and 5 is 4 plus 1, and this is x minus 2 squared plus y squared plus 1. So no matter what values you get for x and y, these are non-negative plus one. This is greater than zero for all x, y. So this domain of this function is all x and y, right? So this is f of x, y is x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus y to the power of one half. And this is going to involve a fair amount of calculation, I think. Um, and not sure there's any way to avoid that. Um, what is the partial of f with respect to x? It's one half over the square root of x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus y, 5, times the derivative of this with respect to x, which is 2x minus 4. So this is, if I factor out a 2 and cancel that 2, x minus 2, and the, over my function f of x, y. That's just shorthand. And the partial of f with respect to y is 1 half, over square root x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus y. 
And when I differentiate this with respect to y, I get 2y. So this is y over this function. So this is zero only when x equal two, and this is zero only when y equals zero. So there's one critical point. which is zero two. Sorry, x equal two, y of t. There's one critical point, which is two zero. So I have to compute d at two zero. So to do that, I have to compute the second derivatives. So that's it's a little bit of a mess, but that's all I can do. Um, if I differentiate this with respect to some, so let me just remember, fx is x minus 2 over x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus y to the power half. So by the quotient rule, if I differentiate this again with respect to x, I get the denominator squared, x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus y. I have the derivative of the numerator, which is 1, times the denominator. Let me just write f of x. Minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator with respect to x. And the derivative of the denominator with respect to x is x minus 2 over f of x. So what I get is f of x squared minus x minus 2 squared over f of x. This is f of x y. Let's see it. Squared. What is all that? This is when I square this, I get x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 5 minus x minus 2 squared over x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 5. I mean, <clears throat> this is getting a little bit messy. So let me just start it again just to make it so I hope it gets a little bit clearer. Okay. So I start with, I'm given this function. square root of x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 5. And I want to find the critical points, and then for each critical point, determine if I have a local maximum or a local minimum or a saddle point using the second derivative test, uh, unless, unfortunately, the second derivative test turns out to convey no information. In any case, I have this function I differentiate, and I checked, this function is the same as x minus 2 squared plus y squared plus 1. That's useful to know. When I differentiate this just by baby calculus, I get a half, 1 over the square root, times the derivative of this with respect to x, which is 2x minus 4. When I take the partial of this with respect to y, I get the same denominator, and the derivative of this with respect to y is 2y. I can cancel a 2 in both cases, so I get x minus 2 or y over the original function, f of x, y. The denominator is always positive. The first derivative is 0. The first derivative with respect to x is 0 when x is 2. The first derivative with respect to y is 0 when y equals 0. So there's a unique critical point. That's it. <clears throat> and I have to apply the second derivative test at this point. So that means I have to calculate the three second partial derivatives. So here is the partial derivative of f with respect to x. If I differentiate this with respect to x, what do I get? I get the denominator squared. I get the derivative of the numerator times the denominator, f of x, y. 
minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of the denominator is x minus 2 over f of x, y. So, oops, good, I made a mistake. I'm happy about that. So this is, if I, if I multiply through by f of x by f of x, I get f of x, y squared minus x minus 2 squared. This is f of x, y squared times f of x. This is f of x, y cubed. And f of x squared is x minus 2 squared plus y squared plus 1. So the f of x, y squared cancels out the x minus 2 squared. I have y squared plus 1 over f of x, y cubed. So this is the second partial of f with respect to x. And if I evaluate this at the critical point 2, 0, f of 2, comma 0 is when y is 0, this is 1. And what is f of 2, comma 0? Um, This is the square root of 2 squared plus 0 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 5. That's 4 plus 5 is 9 minus 8 is 1. That's equal to 1. So the second partial of f with respect to x at 2, 0 is 1 over 1 is 1. That's easy enough. If I take the partial with respect to x and differentiate with respect to y, what do I get? I get the denominator squared. I have the derivative of the numerator times the denominator. But when I differentiate this with respect to y, I get zero. Okay, so minus the second term, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, the derivative with respect to y is y over f of x, y. So f of x, y at the point two, zero, just easier to do it like this. When x is two, I get zero. I get a two minus two, that's zero. And f, y, x at 2, 0 is the same as 0. So I need to compute f, the partial of y with respect to y. So the partial derivative with respect to y is equal to y over f of x, y. So if I differentiate again with respect to y, what do I get? Um, let me just do it here. I get the denominator squared. X squared, uh, well, so f of x, y squared. The derivative of the numerator with respect to y, which is 1 times the denominator, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is y over f of x, y. So if I evaluate this at 2, 0, what do I get? f of 2, 0 is 1 minus 0 over this function, which is 1 squared, is 1. So d at 2, 0 is the determinant of 1, 0, 0, 1, which is 1, which is positive. So for this function, I have a local minimum at 2, 0. Hmm. Let me see if I can draw a picture of this in Maple. So let me share the screen again. 
and the command is plot 3d and square root of x squared plus y squared minus four times x plus five. And let's say I want to plot this from say minus three to three to start y equals minus three to three. I forgot something, square root. I need a parenthesis there. Let's see if it works now. Okay, wow. So here's the graph of this function. Um, Okay, I'm going to go to minus six. I'll just try this. Hmm, still not that good. Um, the minimum is at two zero. Oh, I shouldn't start at two. There we go. So here's my, <clears throat> this is my surface. And you can see it has a minimum right there. That's the point two comma zero. And you can see what a pretty surface that is. It's really, that's actually fantastic. This, these pictures from April are great. Okay. Any questions about this? Um, Okay, well, <clears throat> let's try to find, uh, let's try and do a word problem. Word problems are kind of fun. So, this is problem 43. A shipping company handles rectangular boxes So here we have a rectangular box and it can deal with boxes where the height plus the girth is no more than 96 inches. So we know what the height is, that's the height, and the girth is equal to <clears throat> the perimeter of the smallest side of the box. And I think by the side, they must mean not the top or the bottom, but either the front back, which are the same, or the left right sides, which are the same. So the girth <laughs> plus the height cannot be at most 96 inches. Find the dimensions that, that satisfy this condition 
with the largest volume. So what are the conditions? Suppose we call um, the height x, the width y, and the depth z for the moment. So the height is x. And the girth is the smallest or the minimum of the perimeters of the sides. This box has perimeter 2x plus 2y. This box has perimeter 2x plus 2z. And we want to find the volume. This is the function we want to minimize, which is um, V is X, Y, Z. So... So let's say that the largest perimeter is y. So then the girth is 2x plus 2y, because it's the larger of these two quantities. And the condition is that the height plus the girth is at most 96. And we can make it, if we want to make everything as large as possible, equals 96. So 3x plus y equals 96. And subject to this condition, we want to maximize the volume. So let's see what can we do about that. Hmm. I'm puzzled. So a shipping company handles rectangular boxes provided the sum of the height and the girth does not exceed 96 inches. And the girth is the perimeter of the smallest side of the box. Oh, smallest side, not the largest side. The smallest side of the box. Yes, the minimum, that's what I had said. Um, so... Mm -hmm. 
something puzzles me here, so I'm just going to skip this problem because I can't. It's something I don't understand. Um, No, I think by the size, they must mean this is x, and this is y, and this is z. This is yz and this is xz. Now there's something about this that puzzles me, so I'm just going to skip it. Um, that's the easy way out. Um, let's look at an absolute minimum and maximum problem. That might be a little bit safer for me right now. So, Let's look at number 47. We have the function f of x, y equals x squared plus y squared minus 2y plus 1. <clears throat> so this is well defined everywhere. But we want to look at a certain region of the plane r given by it's all points x and y such that x squared plus y squared it's less than or equal to 4. This is just the equation x squared plus y squared equals 4. It's just the circle of radius 4. And x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 4 is the disk. So it's the disk centered at the origin with radius 2. So this is a disk of radius 2. And on this disk, we want to find the absolute max and min. So we look at the critical points and we look at the value of the function on the boundary. So what are the critical points? If I differentiate with respect to x, I get 2x, and that's equal to 0 if and only if x is 0. If I differentiate with respect to y, I get 2y minus 2, and that's 0 if and only if y is 1. So the unique critical point of this function is right here, 0, 1. <clears throat> now on the boundary, what is the boundary? The boundary are points such that x squared plus y squared equals 2. So on the boundary, f of x, y, x squared plus y squared minus 2y plus 1, x squared plus y squared is 2. This is 2 minus 2y plus 1. This is 3 minus 2y. And y goes from minus 2 to plus 2. So on the boundary of this disk, the value of the function, oops, sorry, x squared plus y squared is 4. So this is 5 minus 2y. So the value of this function is 5 minus 2y on the boundary. And what are the range of values for this? So uh, as y goes from minus 2 to plus 2, so f of x, y is at most 9 and at least 1 on the boundary. f of x, y equals 9 when y equals minus 2, and there x has to equal 0. So at this point, <clears throat> the value of the function is 9. On the boundary, f of x, y equals 1 
when y is plus 2 and x equals 0. So at this point, the function is 1. At this point, the function is 9. And what is it at the point zero one when you let x equals zero and y equals one you get one plus one minus two you get zero so f of zero one is zero f of minus two zero equals nine and this is the absolute min and this is the absolute max so the point of all this is that um let's see what is this this was problem number 47 this point you have the absolute max and at this point you have the absolute min Any questions about this? I mean, these are the standard problems that you're expected to learn how to do in vector calculus. Using the second derivative test to find local maxima and minima, and also uh, using the second derivative test plus evaluating a function on the boundary of a region to find absolute maxima and minima. Let me do a couple more. Let's look at um, number 49. We have a very nice function. f of x equals 4 plus x squared, 4 plus 2x squared plus y squared. And we have the region R is all points x, y such that x and y are between minus 1 and plus 1. Now, if you look at this function, you can see 2x squared plus y squared are never negative. They're 0 when x and y are 0. And that means the absolute minimum, you can tell by looking. Uh, so just by looking, you have an absolute minimum at 0, 0, where you, the function is equal to 4. I mean, we're looking at this function in the square. But just by looking, we'll see it, it comes out of the analysis. But without doing any work, just looking at the function, we see that the absolute minimum is at the origin. But let's look for the critical points. Partial of f with respect to x is 4x. That's equal to 0 only when x is 0. Partial of f with respect to y is 2y. That equals 0 just when y equals 0. So the only critical point is at 0, 0, and f of 0, 0 is 4. But then we have to look at the function on the boundary. So we have to study f of x, y on the boundary. And the boundary consists of four lines. So we have to actually look at four special separate cases. So case one, suppose we're looking at this line. So on this part of the boundary, 
x is 1, and y goes from minus 1 to plus 1. When x is 1, f of x is the function 4 plus 2 times 1 squared plus y squared is 6 plus y squared. And for y between minus 1 and plus 1, this is between... This is f of 1, y. Um, so f of 1, y, it has its largest value when y is plus or minus 1, and its smallest value when y is 0, which is 6. So on this line, the function varies from 6 to 7. And um, it's equal to 7 when y is plus 1 or minus 1. So at these two points, the value of the function is 7. Maybe. Professor, is yes. that 6 plus y squared or 6 plus 1 squared? So f of 1 comma y is 4 plus 2 times y squared, 1 squared plus y squared. 4 plus 2 is 6, so this is 6 plus y squared. And on this line, y goes from minus 1 to plus 1. So this goes from 6 to 7. The smallest value is 6 when y is 0. The largest value is 7 when y is plus or minus 1. Is there a question about that? No, thank you. Okay. And let's say case two, let's look at the other line. That's where x is minus one and y goes from minus one to plus one. So f of minus one y is, again, it's going to be four plus, it's going to be six plus y squared, which is between six or seven, and it takes on its maximum value at these points where it's seven. So on these two lines, the function is between 6 and 7, and the maximum is at these corners. Case 3, we have to look at these horizontal lines. So in, in the first case, y is 1, x is between minus 1 and plus 1. In that case, f of x comma 1, see for this function when y is 1, you get 4 plus 2x squared plus 1 squared is 5 plus 2x squared. And as x goes from minus 1 to 1, this is between, so f of x1 is between 7, and the smallest would be when x is 0, and it's 5. And similarly, if you take case 4, where y is minus 1, and you're going horizontally, across this line. So x goes from minus 1 to 1. f of x minus 1, again, is 5 plus 2x squared. And f of x minus 1 is also between 5 and 7. So on this boundary, the function takes on values between 5 and 7. And it takes on the value 7 at the corners. And at the point zero, zero, the value of the function is zero. So there's an absolute minimum, which is equal to four, when x and y are zero, f of x, y is four. And on the corners, um, it has the value seven. That's the story. Let's try and look at perhaps a more challenging problem, at least the one that's not just a polynomial. 
So Let's be looking at number 55. So here we have a function f of x, y, which is 2y squared minus x squared over 2 plus 2 x squared, y squared. So this is a rational function. The denominator is never zero, so this is defined everywhere. And R is the region bounded by the lines y equal x, y equal 2x, and y equal 2. So what does that look like? This is the line y equals x. This is the line y equal 2. The line y equal 2x looks like that. So the region bounded by these three lines is this triangular region. y equals x, y equals 2x, y equals 2. So we have to find the critical points. So these are the points where the derivatives, the first derivatives are 0. Take the partial of f with respect to x. I get the denominator squared. The derivative of the numerator with respect to x is minus 2x times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator with respect to x, which is 4xy squared. So this is what? This is 2 plus 2 x squared, y squared, squared. Here I have minus 4x minus 4x cubed, y squared, minus 8xy to the fourth, plus 4x cubed, y squared. So these terms cancel. So I get 2 plus 2x squared, y squared, squared. And in the numerator, I can factor out minus 4x times 1 plus 2y to the fourth, if that's correct. Hope so. And the partial of f with respect to y, I differentiate this with respect to y. I get the denominator squared. The derivative of the numerator with respect to y is 4y times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator with respect to y, which is 4x squared y. So this is what? This is 2 plus 2x squared y squared squared. In the numerator, I have 8y plus 8x squared y cubed minus 8x squared y cubed plus 4x to the fourth y. These terms cancel. If I factor out a 4y, which I can do, in the numerator I get 2 plus x to the fourth 
and 2 plus 2x two squared y squared squared. So when is this equal to 0? These are never 0. The only time this is 0 is when x is 0. These are never 0. The only time when this is 0 is when y equals 0. So this function has a unique critical point There's only one, zero, zero, and the value of the function at zero, zero is zero over two, which is zero. So actually zero, zero is not a critical point. I just, I don't know, well, it's not in the interior of the region, but at this point, the value of the function is zero. But then we have to look at the function on the boundary of this triangular region. So we have to look at three separate cases. So again, let me write down my function, f of x, y, is 2y squared minus x squared over 2 plus 2x two squared y squared. And I'm looking at this in the triangular region bounded by these three lines. So this first line, this is just the line y equal 2, and on that line, x goes from 1 to 2. So on this line, f of x comma 2 is 2 times 4 is 8 minus x squared over 2 plus 2 times 4, 2 plus 8 x squared. Right? That's the value of the function on this line. On this line, let me call it line two. On line two, that's the line x equal y, or y equals x, where x goes from zero to two, and f of x comma x, when x equals y, I have two x squared minus x squared is x squared, over 2 plus 2x two to the fourth. And on the third line, where y equals 2x, and x goes from 0 to 1, when y is 2x, f of x comma 2x is 2 times 2x squared minus x squared over 2 plus 2x squared plus 2x quantity squared. This is 4x squared times 2 is 8x squared minus x squared. This is 7x squared over 2 plus 2x squared plus 2x squared is 4x squared over two plus five x squared, if I've done this correctly. So I have to find the maximum values of these functions in these three regions. So if I have the function eight minus x squared over two plus eight x squared, as x goes from one to two, well, the only way I know how to do that is to actually do the arithmetic. So I have to do, must use calculus one. So in this case, I have f of x comma two is eight minus x squared over two plus eight x squared. If I differentiate this with respect to x, I get 2 plus 8x squared squared. The derivative of the numerator 
times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So this is minus 4x minus 16x cubed minus 16 times 8 128x plus 16x cubed over 2 plus 8x squared squared these cancel so this looks like minus 132x over 2 plus 8x squared squared and this equals zero just when x equals zero. So on this line, the only critical point is that x equals zero, that's the point zero two. And Sorry, um, something was wrong. I'm looking at f of x2, but this is x is just between plus one and plus two. So this function, actually this function is, yes, it's not zero. The, the critical point is not on the line. And on this function, in fact, this is, this function is, um, This is the derivative. This is negative. So this function is decreasing on this line. So the minimum on this line is at this point, f of 1 comma 2. If you let x equal 1 and y equal 2, we get 2 times 2 squared minus 1 squared over 2 plus 2 times 2 squared times 1 squared. This is 8 minus 1. This is 7. This is 2 times 8. This is 4 times 2 is 8 plus 2 is 10. I get 7 over 10. That's correct. And f at 2 comma 2, I'm just evaluating this function when x is 2. When x is 2, this is 4 times. This is 8 minus 4. This is 4 over 2 times 2, 4 times 4, 16, 32, over 34, or 2 over 17, which is certainly smaller. So this function is decreasing from 7 over 10 to 12 over 7 on this line. So what's that? All right. we know the function at 0, 0 is equal to 0. Um, and on this line, uh, it's one of these two values. What about on this line? Let's look at this on line three. So f of x, 2x is 7x squared over 2 plus, ah, I'm not doing this wrong. It's 2x squared y squared. So I just have, this is 2x squared times 2 times 2x squared. This is 2x squared times 4x squared, this is 2 plus 8x cubed. Right? So if I let, if I have my function, y squared minus x squared, and y is 2x, y squared is 4x squared, times 2 is 8x squared minus x squared is 7x squared. y squared is 4x squared, times x squared is 4x to the fourth, times 2 is 8x to the 4th, 2 plus 8x to the 4th. So f of x, 2x is 7x squared over 2 plus 8x to the 4th. So if I differentiate this with respect to x, you see where its maximum or minimum might be. I get 2 plus 8x to the 4, and this is always positive. 
not greater than or equal to zero. This is never negative. I get two plus eight X to the fourth squared, the derivative of the numerator, 14 X times the denominator, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is 32 X cubed. So, let me just double check everything again. On the line y equals 2x my function is 2y squared minus x squared. That's or that's 8y squared, 4y squared times 2, 8y squared minus x squared. And 2x squared times 2y squared is 8x to the fourth, 2 plus 8x to the fourth. If I differentiate that with respect to x, I get 14x times 2 plus 8x to the fourth minus 7x squared times 32x cubed. So this is 7, sorry, this is 2 plus 8x to the fourth squared. 14x times 2 is 28x plus 14 times 8, x to the fifth, minus 7 times 32, x to the fifth. So this is 7 times 32 is 14 times 16. So if I subtract 14 times 8 minus 14 times 16, it's minus 14 times 8. So in the unlikely event this arithmetic is correct, this is 28x minus 14 times 8. 8 fours are 32, 112 x to the fifth over 2 plus 8x to the fourth squared. So, and this is equal to zero when, let me just go through this on a bigger, cleaner sheet of paper, just so we're not killing ourselves for nothing. So we have the function f of x, y equal two y squared minus x squared over two plus two x squared y squared. And I want to evaluate that function on the line y equals 2x. So when y equals 2x, uh, f of x comma 2x is 2 times 2x squared minus x squared over 2 plus 2x squared, 2x quantity squared. This is 8 x squared minus x squared is 7x squared. This is 2 plus 2 times 4, 8x to the fourth. So I'm looking at this function on this line, and I want to find the maximum and the minimum. So if I differentiate this function, df dx, this is 2 plus 8x to the fourth, the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So this is 2 plus 8x to the fourth. This is 28x plus 8 times 14. 8 times 14 is 7 times 16. x to the fifth minus 7 times 32 x to the fifth. So this is 28 x minus 7 times 16, 112 x to the fifth over 2 plus 8 x to the fourth. And this equals 0. This is never zero. This is um, when 28x
then 28x equals 112 x to the fifth. See, if I divide this by 4x, this is 7 equals, I'll get x to the fourth. 4 into this is 28. So x to the fourth equals 7 over 28. I'm not sure I'm doing my anything correct today. Hmm. This is y equals 2, y equals x, y equals 2x. And this is the region I'm looking at. And if I'm just looking at this, in this on this part of the boundary, this is the line y equals 2x. And I want to find the maximum minimum on this line. So when y is 2x, this is 4 times 2, this is 7x squared. That looks right. And when y is 2x, this is 4x squared times 2x squared is 8x to the fourth. So this looks okay. So 7x squared over 2 plus 8x to the fourth. If, oh, I, here's a mistake. When I, di when I differentiate, it's this squared. That's certainly true. Uh, it's the denominator squared. I was screwing that up for some reason. The derivative of the numerator, 14x times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. So this is still 28x plus 8 times 14, which is 7 times 16x to the fifth, minus 7 times 16x to the fifth, over this squared. So this is 28x minus 112x to the fifth over this. But I still have to solve 28x equals 112x to the fifth. That means x to the fourth. This is 4 times 7. This is... Um, Sixteen times seven is that right? Um, so this is if I cancel the sevens, I get yeah. All right, this is okay. So I have twenty-eight x equals. 112 x to the fifth. So if I divide by 7 x, here I get x to the fourth, 7 into 112 is 16, equals 4. So x to the fourth is a 4, a fourth. So x squared is a half, so x is 1 over the square root of 2. And if x is 1 over the square root of 2, y, which is 2x, is 2 over the square root of 2, which is the square root of 2. So f of 1 over root 2, root 2, is equal to what? Um, when x is 1 over root 2, x squared is a half. That's 7 halves over 2 plus 8 over, and when I square this, a fourth. So this is 7 halves over 4, which is 7 eighths. So at this point, 1 over root 2, which is about 0.7, the value of the function is 7 eighths. So on this line, the maximum, it's 0 here, the maximum is 7 eighths. 
And it turns out that's the maximum overall. So this is what's going to turn out to be uh, the unique, um, the absolute maximum. So in this triangular region, this is the absolute max and it's zero here and that's the absolute min. So, one of the things you get when you get to vector calculus is hard problems that take a lot of time to figure out. So these are great problems for homework, but never a problem on the exam because I could only give you one problem on the exam and give you an hour to do it. So that's not the greatest thing. Right. Anyway, if there's a moral from this, it's that in vector calculus, you start getting hard problems and uh, you have to put in a lot of time to solve them. That seems to be the whole story. Uh, I would encourage you to do um, uh, as many problems as you can, not just the homework problems. And I have a lot of these Zoom problem sessions when you can log on and we have all the time necessary uh, to work out solutions together. Um, and let me just remind you that the second uh, midterm is exactly two weeks from today. And I'll have a review sheet or a view, review problems, but there's still additional material we're going to cover that uh, for the midterm. Any questions before we're done for the morning? If not, uh, uh, enjoy the rainy weather if you can. And next class is next uh, Monday. Right. Bye, all.